This is McFly Angler. starts now. For a hook, I like these Gamagatsu B10S's in size 1 aught. And for thread, I like Vivis 140 power thread in chartreuse. Start your thread halfway down the hook shank and clip off the waist. Then bring your thread down past the bend of the hook and back up. Actually, bring it down a little further than I went. You will see why in a minute. To make the fly weedless, we will need some stiff mono or fluorocarbon. Here I'm using 25 pound P-line fluorocarbon. Clip off a small section like so, then tie this in with the bend of the line following the hook bend. Bring your thread down quite a ways into the bend of the hook. Actually, I did not go far enough. You want it almost to the final bend. Now whip finish the thread to hold it in place and clip off the waist. To ensure that the thread doesn't slip out, we will add some brush on super glue like this Loctite. Brush some over the thread wraps like so. As you can see, the bend of the fluorocarbon aligns with the hook bend. Once the glue dries, then start your thread again and clip off the waist. Bring the thread down just to the start of the bend of the hook. Now we will need some dubbing. I like this Starburst dubbing by Flat Tires Dungeon because it is so flashy. I am mixing the hot yellow and olive colors. Pull off a small amount of the dubbing and set aside the larger clump. Now make a small dubbing bump at the beginning of the hook bend. To make the legs, I like using this crystal web, also by Fly Tires Dungeon. It's stiff enough for our needs here and has a little shimmer to it. I'm using both hot yellow and hot olive. Pull out about this much of the hot yellow fiber, clip it off the hank and set it aside. Now pull out about half as much of the olive fiber and clip it off. Then double it over and cut in half. I find wetting the fiber helps keep it all together. Now double over the yellow fiber and cut that to make two even strands. This will actually make two flies. Set one clump down on the table like so. Then cut the olive to four equal sections like this. Place one of the olive sections at the end of the yellow section and pinch them together. Now take your thread and hold it down with your free fingers and start wrapping close to the end of the clump. Wrap very tightly as this will help flare out the fiber slightly. Then hand whip finish the thread and clip off the two tag ends. Do the same thing on the other end of the yellow clump to make two legs. Now I didn't show it here, but I added a dot of super glue to the whip finishes to keep them in place through more fish strikes. I measure out the legs to about as long as the hook shank and then tie it in on the side of the fly, up tight against the dubbing bump. This will flare out the legs and make it look more like a frog. Cut off the waist and repeat on the other side. Then clean up that section with a few wraps. Now we need some chartreuse marabou. Grab a plume from the hank and stroke the fibers forward. Then tie it in on top of the legs, angling back to just shy of the leg joints. Cut off the waist and then clean up that section with a few wraps. Now for the foam. We will be using chartreuse and brown two millimeter Eva foam. Measure out a strip to a little shy of the hook gap for both the brown and chartreuse foam. Then with long scissors or a knife, cut these strips even. Cut a taper into the front of the two pieces of foam, add a brush of super glue to the thread wraps and then tie the foam in with the brown section on top. Tie back to where the legs start and then make multiple tight wraps up and down the foam to compress it slightly.
Now take more of that dubbing mix you made and dub it onto the thread. A simple way to dub when using a fair amount like this is to just twist on the tip of the dubbing, then grab the back end and wind up the hook. This will twist the dubbing with each wrap and make it much easier. Add more if necessary. Just make sure you dub up to about two eye lengths shy of the eye of the hook. Pull back the fibers and wrap over them like so to create a small thread bump. Now we will be using red starburst dubbing. You could actually add rubber legs here also if you want, but my customer had requested the fly that utilizes red legs up front. Place parallel on the hook shank and make a few X wraps over it to lock it in place. Add a drop of super glue over the wraps and then pull the foam over everything. Push the foam over the hook like so and then wrap down tightly in front of the legs. Now you can cut off the brown foam. Then clean up that section with a few more wraps. Now cover the bare hook shank with a few wraps to create a base for tying in the rest of the foam. End with your thread at eye length shy of the eye of the hook. Paint on a little super glue, then pull the chartreuse foam forward and tie that down with a small space behind the hook eye. Then wrap up and down the foam bump with thread wraps to compress the foam slightly and end towards the back of this space. Now we will need foam cylinders. I have these Gunville cutters and foam brick, both I got from Up Avon Fly Fishing. I hope I said that right. They allow you to make foam cylinders of many sizes. Today I'm using the seven millimeter. Just put the cutter in a drill, put the cylinder over some cardboard so you don't cut your table, and then drill out a foam cylinder. You can also buy foam cylinders pre-cut, if you want, from River Road Cutters. Use the quarter size in black if you choose to buy them. Once you have your foam cylinder, place a dab of super glue over the thread wraps and place the cylinder on top, perpendicular, like so. Fold over the chartreuse foam and tie it down tight behind the cylinder. Then whip finish your fly with a four to five turn whip finish and seat it tightly. I like to make a second whip finish as well to ensure that this stays together. Now cut off the chartreuse foam tag end with a little room like so. Now we need to cut the foam flush. In fact, get a little of the chartreuse cut as well to make it perfectly straight up and down. And do the same thing on the other side as well, ensuring that they are as symmetrical as possible. Now to add some eyes. I like this gel type super glue. I'm using six millimeter gold eyes. Place a dot of glue on the foam cylinder like so. Then place one eye on, trying to cover most of the foam cylinder. Press tightly with your scissors or bogkin, ensuring that it adheres properly. Then do the same thing with the other eye. Now, I like to pull the arms back and paint a little super glue on the base of the arms. This will ensure that they splay outward. Pull the arms up and cut evenly like so. Oops, I think I cut a little too long for my liking, so I'm trimming them a little more here. Now, start your thread once again behind the hook eye and cut off the tag end. Pull up the mono so there is a little gap past the hook point. Not too tight, but not too loose. About there is right. Tie this in with some X wraps. Now, you can pull the weed guard to the correct size, like so, if you tied it in too loose. Pull the weed guard back and out of the way, then wrap a few times in front of it before trimming off the waist. Then clip off the excess mono as close as you can. Tie down the tag end and then whip finish the fly. As you can see, the mono tends to want to move to one side. This is made worse by me not tying down deep enough into the bend of the hook. It can be corrected by just adjusting it like so. When you're happy with the guard, then take some super glue and dab around the whip finishes you have made, both behind and in front of the frog eyes. While not necessary, I also like to clip the corners off of the foam here. Now to color this fly up to look like a frog. I'm using Sharp Pack markers in olive, mocha, and crimson. Sharp Pack make great markers for fly tying, but they are a little pricey. So you can use colored Sharpies as well if you don't want to buy these. Start with brown and make spots on the back of the frog with it. You don't have to follow my pattern here, but if you want to, I'm making two dots on either side of the head 
and two dots on either side of the body. Now for the olive. I make spots between the brown dots with it and get in on the rear and in the center of the fly between the brown dots. Also a few in the front as well. Now for a few red dots in the center filling any gaps. Again, color this how you want. This is just how I decided to do these. But get creative and make it your own. And there we have it, a high float frog with kicking legs. The big bulky head helps push some water when stripped. And this will make a slight spitting sound across the top of the water. By the way, I get most of my materials from Dooley's Fly Fishing. They are an online and brick and mortar shop from Quincy, Illinois. They have great prices on name brand fly tying materials. And best of all, they're offering all of my subscribers an even larger discount. Type in McFly15 at checkout for an additional 15% off of anything in their shop. They have great customer service and carry a lot of materials. So go check them out today by going to www.dooliesflyfishing.com or just show up at their shop if you live close by. Also, you all know I work closely with Risenfly, who makes many of their own materials, hooks, rods, reels, and more. In fact, I love their scissors and use them on all of my flies. Everything they carry is very high quality, but priced better than anywhere I've ever seen. They have also offered you all a discount, so go to www.risenfly.com and type in McFly at checkout for 15% off of everything in their shop as well. Well, thanks for watching. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.